Hey everybody, today I thought I would make shepherd's pie and uh, show you how I do it. It's really flavorful and we love uh, meat and mashed potatoes together. So this is a really good meal if you like that combination. And at the end of the video, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how I have started um, taking care of my leftovers. So I will go ahead and bring the camera down and let you see. And I'm always so um, crowded. What I think I'm going to do is buy a little rolling cart where I can pull right up here beside of me and I can put all my ingredients on and I won't have everything so um, crowded on my stove and I think that'll be a good idea. So I'm using this really beautiful nice pan that I received from one of y'all and I did not get a name with it so I don't know who gave it to me but I really appreciate it. I've, I've used it quite a few times and I really love it. So I'm going to make a big shepherd's pie. And I'm using, um, let's see, it's almost three pounds of hamburger. And then I'm going to use, um, this meat masher thing that comes in so handy. So what you want to do is just brown your hamburger meat and get it all broken up. Now, uh, you can have a casserole dish ready to put this in, but I can put this pan in the oven, so I'm just going to make it and put the potatoes on top in this pan and just stick it in the oven that way. So it shouldn't take too long for the meat to, to brown. But I'm going to go ahead. You can use fresh onion and chop it up yourself. I have some of um, this onion, which is um, very handy. And so I'm just going to put it in. And then, along with the onion, I'm going to add some garlic. And you can add garlic salt or, or the um, garlic you can buy like that. I'm probably going to use some of both. I really love the smell of onion and garlic that's cooking. It's got the best smell. And this is such a simple recipe. That looks like a tablespoon and I'm going to add uh, close to another tablespoon. Now when you make it, you add whatever amount you like. I'm 
And I believe that's probably all I need to use this for. If you don't have one of these, it, it, you will really love it. If you can get one, I know they sell them at Walmart. I was gifted this and I absolutely love it. So, go ahead and stir up your meat with your garlic and your onion in it. You can use green pepper if you want to. Right now, you're just trying to get your your meat browned. And while this is cooking, I'll talk with you a minute about um, my storage of leftovers. If you've watched many of my videos, you know my husband has dementia. And one, I'll cook something and he'll really love it. And then um, maybe a week or two later, I'll cook it again and he can't stand it. And sometimes he says he just can't chew something or for one reason or another, he can't eat what I cook. So, what I've decided to do is kind of be able to have a um, choices for him. You know, not just one thing, well, this is what I cook and this is what you need to eat. I want to offer him more than that. So I'm not especially cooking things to freeze, but when I cook, if I can, I make a little extra, and then I'm going to show you my bowls I got. I got these at Amazon. It was 50 lids, 50 containers for about $17. They're freezer safe microwave safe and it's about the perfect amount of food for one person it's 25 ounces so uh like i made spaghetti a day or two ago and when we finished eating i just put spaghetti noodles in and then put sauce on it put the lid on it put it in the freezer so if he feels like he would like spaghetti or Kaylin, or myself, we can take out one of those and heat up spaghetti, and that will uh, be satisfying. Last night I made um, teriyaki chicken wings, and I had enough to just fill up this bowl, so I put those. Uh, in the bowl so there's a serving of that if he decides or anyone decides that they would like to have it there's going to be plenty of this left that i will put in the containers and then uh, that'll be an option for him so it'll be like um Kind of like a little uh, restaurant or something where you can go in and place your order. And hopefully that will help him to be able to eat better because he has lost lots of weight. So, um, you know, if you're a single person by yourself or just a husband and wife, if maybe when you cook a meal, you could maybe cook just a little bit extra and put, uh, save one or two servings in your freezer. On days you don't really feel like cooking, you could take that out and microwave it and not have to work so hard. 
so the neat part of our um, shepherd's pie is done. Now I'm going to start adding the other stuff. So I'm going to put some basil in, which y'all know I love basil. And <clears throat> as you know, you put the ingredients you want in it, the spices and all. I put some garlic. My daughter bought me these the other day. She is a manager to TJ Maxx, and I just love these little salt and pepper things, so she got them for me. So there's some pepper and some salt. Put a splash of Worcestershire sauce. Or, yeah, Worcestershire sauce. I put for this amount of food, I put probably a fourth of a cup of the Worcestershire. I'm gonna stir this around. Next, I'm going to add a uh, Lipton onion soup packet. Also, I'm going to add a cream of mushroom soup. If I'd have had two cans of the cream of mushroom soup, I would have added both. And I love to see that soup fall out of the can. As I've said before, it doesn't take a lot to entertain me, but I just really enjoy seeing that. So, stir this around. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some sour cream. This was practically full and I put about three fourths of the container. Stir that around. And there is so much meat in here and all. I think I'm going to put a second packet of the onion soup. I really love how this gives it a deep flavor. And also we need a little bit of milk. So this is going to be real um, flavorful, and with those potatoes on top, it's going to be so good. And I'm going to cook this on 400 until my potatoes just start to um, get a light brown color on them, but um, now... You know what I think I'm going to have to do is 
I'll make one in here, but I'm gonna have to take some out and put in a different container because this is really, um, this is gonna be too full for the vegetables and the potatoes. So I, I'm going to get um, let me see I'm going to go ahead and put this one in here and get it coated with the sauce and all but then I'm going to put it in a different container. So let me run over to my cabinet and get the different container and I'll be right back. feeling at this and I believe that's enough I need to get this little bit there and I think it could use a little bit more milk part is all done the um, meat part just getting that stirred up a little bit we're gonna have lots of leftovers I can tell you Okay, and then here's this one. So now the next thing I'm going to do is make the mashed potatoes. Sorry about all this stuff in the way. So I'm going to take my pot. This this only takes a just a minute. I'm using instant potatoes. Um, if you want to use real potatoes, it'd be even better. But I want to make quite a bit of instant potatoes. So I put my milk in my pot. And I want to have the potatoes kind of um, garlicky, so I'm going to add some of this to the milk. What I had intended to do, and you know I'm so forgetful, 
I meant to put just a little butter in here and put some of this garlic and saute it for a second and then add the milk, but I forgot. So I'm gonna put a big heaping thing of garlic salt. I'm not garlic salt, but garlic. And then, when I don't let this milk come to a boil, I, um, as I stir it, when I can feel a film on the bottom, and I can see a little smoke coming off, then, or steam, then I know that uh, the milk is hot enough. I don't always add cream cheese to my instant potatoes, but I tell you when you're making instant potatoes, it's the difference between good instant potatoes and great instant potatoes. And some people just don't like them, and I can understand that too. So I'm going to add half of this once I put the potato flakes in there. And I'll add some butter and salt and pepper. And then I'll put the potatoes on this um, pan of the food and then on my small pan. I'll put it in the oven on 400 for probably half an hour and then take it out. And I thought about putting a layer of cheese in between this and the mashed potatoes, but I don't believe I will. I just, um, I love cheese, but I think that may take away some of the taste. You can always sprinkle some on your um, plate, the cheese, if you want to. So it's a pretty much milk, so it's taken a little bit of time, but I can feel that film starting to get on the bottom. And you can make these as thick or thin as you want. And uh, I believe I'm going to go ahead and start adding the mashed potatoes. Or the flakes. And I didn't measure. And I usually don't measure, so I don't know how much to tell you probably. Just read the box. To know how much potatoes to put. And I believe that's going to be thick enough. It looks a little bit thin, but after it sits for a few minutes, it will thicken up really good. The heat's making them start to bubble over or bubble up. Okay, now we want to add half of our cream cheese. 
and I like to do it in little smaller pieces so it will melt quicker. And then I'm going to add my butter. I'm going to put about half of a stick. Get it good and rich. Then I'm going to add some salt and pepper. Just give it a stir. And it won't take but a minute for the um, butter and the cream cheese to melt down. And see the potatoes are nice and creamy. potatoes to both of my pans and hopefully I've made enough potatoes So here's this, ready to go in the oven, and then bring this over. So just spread that out. I'm going to put this in the oven and when we come back, it will be ready um, to look at and see what you think. The shepherd's pie is done and <clears throat> I didn't let it go quite as long as I had thought I would because I had to go pick up Kaylin from school. So um, it is not browned on the um, potatoes, but that's okay. It's, uh, I think I might even like it better not having that. Um, I call it like a skin or the brown part. If you like that, just, uh, you know, cook it till it's browned. And um, so then I had to go ahead and leave. And it took about 35 minutes or so that this rested while I was um, at the school waiting on Kaylin. So it's rested plenty of time. And here is the big one. And here is the small one. This would be real good with some um, Parmesan cheese on it, I think. And <clears throat> I have been working out a plan so that I can 
uh, film better for y'all. So I've ordered the um, rolling cart from Amazon. I should have it by Friday. And hopefully my videos will be a little bit better by then. So anyway, I'm going to cut this uh, smaller one. I know I'm pretty far away from the camera and I'm sorry. So it came out real nice and um, clean out of the pan because it had got to rest. And then here it is on the plate. And I'm going to give it a taste. And tell you what I think. This has got some wonderful flavor. I need a little more salt on mine, maybe a little more pepper. Otherwise, it is perfect. It's really delicious. I'm going to feed my family with it tonight. Then what's left, I'll put it in my little containers. And if I can think, I'll put the link to these in the description box. And then uh, if you think you'd like to order some, you'll have that link. But um, it is a good way to do your leftovers and then have a little variety when you're looking for something to eat. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Do something kind for yourself and someone else. It's very important. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.